Welcome to the Top Business Leader Show, powered by Rise 25 Media. We feature top founders, executives, and business leaders from all over the world. Chad Franzen here, co-host for the show, where we feature top restaurateurs, investors, and business leaders. This is part of our Spot On series. Spot On has the best-in-class payment platform for retail, and they have a flagship solution called Spot On Restaurant, where they combine marketing, software, and payments all in one. They've served everyone from larger chains like Dairy Queen and Subway to small mom-and-pop restaurants. To learn more, go to spoton.com. This episode is brought to you by Rise25. We help B2B businesses to get ROI, clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships through Done For You podcasts. If you have a B2B business and want to build great relationships with clients, referral partners, and thought leaders in your space, there's no better way to do it than through podcasts and content marketing. To learn more, go to rise25.com or email us at support at rise25.com. Before I introduce today's guest, Marcus Panero, I want to thank Meredith Sandlin for the introduction. Meredith is the author of the award-winning book, Delivering the Digital Restaurant, and she is CEO of Empowered Delivery, a B2B SaaS company that enables all restaurants to profitably and sustainably serve the growth consumer demand for delivered meals. She has been a guest on this show, and I encourage you to go back and listen to her episode. It's called Upgrading Your Restaurant's Digital Strategy. As for our guest today, Marcus Panero is a dedicated entrepreneur and visionary leader with a proven track record of creating and growing successful ventures. He has 18 years of experience in the restaurant industry, which includes founding Dallas-based Urban Taco in 2007 and Umi Digital Kitchen in 2020. Marcus, welcome to the show. Hey, pleasure to be here, Chad. Thank you for having me. Hey, tell me, you've got kind of a varied uh, list of experiences. Tell me about how you uh, got started in the restaurant industry. So it was literally my first job out of college. Um, you know, I graduated on Friday and started working with a restaurant group here in Dallas on Monday. So it really became the only thing I really knew what to do, you know, <laughs> um, you know, growing, you know, post-college, it just became my, my lane and my channel. So, you know, there was no turning back after that. What was your first job? Um, so I supervised a one location for a multi-concept group here in Dallas. And from there, it just kind of developed into more of a management role, area director, and then, you know, kind of grew up the ladder a little bit. And then two years after that, I opened my first restaurant at 24. Wow. Amazing. Did you grow up like working in the restaurant industry, you know, um, you know, to earn extra cash or anything like that? Or did you just start out after, after college? Um, yeah, there's a few jobs that I held, like just like the majority of folks, like, you know, through, through, through mostly through like high school mm -hmm. and then past that, you know, I always just envisioned myself as a concept person and just a passion for food and the restaurant industry in, in general. Mm -hmm. Where does that passion for food come from? Well, we all like to eat. I just <laughs> like to eat a little bit more than most folks. <laughs> <laughs> what do you enjoy most about working in that industry, the restaurant and hospitality industry? Um, I think there's a certain feeling of that I enjoy in terms of, one, the hospitality part of it is just, you know, being able to be hospitable to you know, folks that come in uh, and experience your food, your creation. And, you know, to me, the biggest compliment is when, you know, when I look at it from a certain perspective in terms of somebody made a conscious effort to spend their money with my, you know, buying my food that, that I created, that I developed. And to me, that's just one of the most satisfactory feelings I can get as an entrepreneur. It's a sm something small. Um, you don't think about it all the time, but when you really put it in perspective, that feeling is it's very hard to to get from anything else in in my opinion yeah yeah you know as i mentioned you founded umi in 2020 and we'll we'll get into that but uh take me through your journey kind of up to that point especially some of your entrepreneurial ventures i know you you founded urban taco like you know more than 10 years before umi so take mm -hmm. me through that and uh uh you know some of the other things you've been involved with if you could yeah, so, you know, the Urban Tacos, you know, kind of, it's the thing that I'm most known for, at least here at a, at a regional level, and it's my most well-known brand, and it became my identity, you know, it's who I was, it's, you know, I'm the Urban Taco guy, and, um, you know, we, we had Urban Taco for about, you know, the last 18 years, and, 
you know, it's a traditional brick and mortar. Um, you know, it's, there was no, the restaurant industry went through a, a period of zero innovation for, you know, I guess for the last, I mean, probably since the first digital POS, like there's just been no innovation in, in the restaurant business and COVID, you know, I guess a silver lining would be that it really brought a level of innovation into the restaurant business that had never really been experienced. You know, a lot of, you know, technology, a lot of private equity money, a lot of VC money, and it accelerated certain aspects of the restaurant industry that needed innovation and really just took us to, you know, pulled forward that the pipeline of innovation that was going to happen. So at that point is when I realized like, hey, like I, I understand there's a certain need for what we're trying to create. There's enough technology and third party development, the technology that's been developed that we can harness to create what we are looking to to develop, which was UMI, which is a delivery only kitchen. Um, so because of that pulled forward innovation, we were able to create our very efficient restaurant, um, which, you know, it's a delivery kitchen is like, you know, what we're going to call it. Um, you know, you can see what we have behind me. Those are our pickup lockers where people, you know, traditionally will place an order on, on their phone, on our app. And then our food is either picked up by them here through those lockers without any interaction with, you know, front of house staff or waiter or manager. And then the food is then, um, or the food can be delivered through our first party drivers as well. So you're in uh, the Umi location right now. We're looking at it. No, this is a, it's just a nice little. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Background. I was going to say, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, it does. Hey, uh, <laughs> so, so, um, you know, you founded it in 2020. Surely, uh, is it all just a reaction to COVID or did you have that idea kind of percolating in your head for a while? Um, yeah, very good question. So I, ironically, like I met my business partner in 2019 at our our kids were in the same school in the same class um he's also he also has a restaurant background and you know we started talking probably late 2019 about some of the trends that we've been observing and you know he comes from a very corporate background and he was trying to also find something different to do in the restaurant space just not the traditional restaurant and then we you know we started talking about you know some of the trends that we saw that could come to fruition in the near future that could you know shape the future of the restaurant like the restaurant of the future um and that you know revolved around you know the ghost kitchen space dark kitchens virtual brands and right when covid came around march of 2020 you know we you know everybody ran for the hills and like hey like let's take care of our family like we don't know what's going to happen and as we were coming out of covid we started talking again and realized that hey like i think the idea that we were crafting, I think there's there's legs for that. And, you know, it's something that we can, you know, I think it's a good time to start it. So, so yeah, we started really crafting the idea. I wrote, you know, several different business plans. You know, we had multiple different ideas, but, you know, concepts. And we just really kept fine-tuning, fine-tuning until we figured, you know, we came up with the final model for Umi Digital Kitchen. So tell me how how it works from a customer standpoint. They they would go to your to the Umi website or or something like that, and um, I'm guessing or from what I saw on the website, there's a there's multiple options they can choose from in terms of the types of brands and things like that. Yeah. Can you tell me just so, how it works and what a customer would you know? Let's say a first time customer goes to the website and they want to get something to eat. Yeah, absolutely. So we are a digital food hall. Um, a customer can go to our website or download our, our, our mobile app. And then from there, there's currently we have seven different concepts or brands where they can order from. And we have one central kitchen and we, you know, the same guy that's cooking chicken for grilled chicken tacos is also doing grilled chicken for your salad. Um, so that we cross utilize, um, our, you know, our ingredients, cross utilize our staff. Um, and run one central kitchen where we are able to control the quality. It's, you know, we're vertically integrated. So it's, you know, you place an order through our platform. We make the food with our staff and then we either deliver the food or you come pick it up. And one of the things that differentiates us versus a regular restaurant is that, yes, you can order from multiple restaurants so or concept or menu. So, you know, let's say you're at your house and, you know, you're, you're you know, there's a family of four and the kids want chicken nuggets. 
the wife wants a salad and the husband wants uh, tacos. So you can go on our on our app and place an order for all different types of cuisines. And then it's all, to, you know, it all comes together with one ticket, one delivery. So Urban Taco is is one of the brands um, served by Umi. I'm looking at your, your website now. You've also got Love Bowls, Cluckies, Hot Lips, Bullrito, Savage Rabbit, Tribal All Day, and Pachugo Gelato. Um, are some of the are the, some of the, those also your um, your you know brainstorms or are they yeah, currently brands you all brands, um, like the Pachugo is a it's a CPG brand and then so is um, Tribal Juices. It's a local. Um, juice company here in Dallas that does cold um, cold pressed juices. So mm -hmm. we, you know, we, we're a marketplace for them. Mm -hmm. But the re the restaurant brands are all our brands, including Urban Taco, which is part of the umbrella. But you know, we we created those brands based on what we saw our customers were were looking for, and you know, based on the data data that we're looking at. Um, we have shifted some brands here and there, but now we understand what the customer is looking for. You know, we survey our customers, we ask them what they're looking for. And, you know, every time that we develop a new brand, it's based on customer feedback. And, you know, these brands that we develop and put out seem to be doing better than the previous brands based on that feedback that, that we get from our customers. So if you don't mind, just tell me kind of like a, just give me a brief description of what, uh, like, you know, Love Bowls is. Yeah, Love Bowls is our lifestyle bowl concept. So, you know, it's, you know, a little bit of Mediterranean, a little bit of, you know, Latin infused flavors, more like global flavors, but, you know, very um, like lifestyle driven, you know, so anything from a, like a shawarma bowl to a buffalo chicken bowl. Um, so very, very diverse. And Cluckies, I'm guessing the name kind of speaks for itself. Yeah, that's our uh, chicken and wing house. So, you know, wings and, and fried chicken. So, you know, we got some great fun flavors for our wings. And then we also do tenders and chicken sandwiches. What about Hot Lips? Hot Lips is our Asian concept. Um, and it's probably one of our most popular ones. So anything from pad thai to drunken noodles, we have a hot chicken, uh, like a bang bang chicken. And I think Hot Lips is a good example of like some of the things that we do that like, gives us a, like, because we have such a diverse menu, you know, we're able to cross utilize some of our ingredients. So we have a uh, a barbacoa egg roll. So we use a barbacoa from Urban Taco to make an egg roll. So that's something fun that that we created in house with our very company. nice. Uh, I'm guessing I know what burrito is, but can you tell me? Yeah, so burrito is um, you know it's a little bit of, it's like a sister brand to Urban Taco. So imagine Urban Taco, but in a bowl or a burrito. Sure. So that's so, what I, I kind of figured that. So, and then Savage Rabbit would be the last one that I'll ask you about. Yeah. That's like our, our very, um, like big salads, you know, we're, okay. so that's, you know, we're doing salads right now. Eventually we'll do wraps, but you know, they're very fun and creative salads that, you know, have a little bit of a savage attitude. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. So a very hungry rabbit would, uh, attack those things. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, you mentioned that a lot of those brands were, um, founded upon um, kind of like feedback from customers. How important is customer feedback to Umi? I think it's probably on the top three most important things for, for Umi. Um, I think that's, it should be for any restaurant operator. If there's nothing, there's no more valuable data than actually listening to your customers and getting their feedback. So we really, really, focus on getting as much feedback from our customers at any point of their, you know, their, their life cycle through us. So, you know, whether it's them picking up urban talk, you know, picking up their food and just asking them questions like, Hey, how you doing? How did you hear about us? Hey, like, how was your dish yesterday? I noticed, you know, we, we can look up a customer and say, Hey, this person ordered one of our new bowls last week. Let's ask them what they thought about it. Um, and that's just like at a, personal level but then we also you know have different levels levers in the back that we can pull with you know follow-up questions you know because every transaction that's done through our platform you know we 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 have the data we have either an email or a phone number so based on that you know we're able to retarget the customer and ask them directly for their feedback so about an hour after the order is picked up we send them a follow-up text question and asking asking them for feedback so you know, it could be, you know, good feedback and we 
from there, we funnel them to maybe a Google review or maybe some other perks. If it's negative feedback, which is to me the most important one, we, we you know, I come in and troubleshoot it myself and figure out a way to one, figure out what happened, you know, who was on the shift that day, um, you know, what items they ordered, and then what can we do to fix it internally, but also how do we turn around this customer to make them happy? And that's where, you know, we have our different tools that we can invite it back um, and, you know, turn the customer around and avoid a negative review. How, how did customer feedback then lead to, you know, love bowls, cluckies, hot lips? Yeah, so we did that through a series of, of polls and asking customers like, hey, like if, if we were to come up with a new concept, like what would be your top concepts that you would recommend we add? Uh, and then we also look at what people are ordering the most. So we we realized that our demographic and our customers really like spicy and really like 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 rich food. So we then created our Clucky's concept, thinking with that in mind. You know, so very bold sauces for our wings, for our tenders, like very um, like strong bold flavors. And then we also had a cohort of customers that were looking for something that. You know, isn't necessarily Mexican, isn't necessarily ethnic or spicy and, you know, more of an everyday lifestyle type brand. And that's how we said, OK, well, let's let's think about milder flavors. Maybe not. You know, we don't use we don't. So it's like you have two different different cohorts and you got to kind of and then the same at the same time, like the, the same person that, you know, we study our customer behavior. So, it, you know, we can see when a customer customers on Monday and Tuesday, they like to order salads. They like, they like to order bowls. They like to kind of stay healthy, recover from the weekend. By Thursday, they're ordering tacos. And then by Saturday and Sunday, they're, you know, heavy on the wings, chicken sandwich, tenders, um, pad thai, drunken noodles. So because of that, like our customer, you know, we have a flavor for every occasion. So, you know, the same customer that likes love bowls on a Monday or Tuesday, they might like, you know, wings on a Sunday night or a Sunday evening or a Sunday morning. Um, so that's another reason why our customers can keep coming back to us because it's not the same dish over and over. Like you can you can pick a restaurant that you like and, you know, you probably go once a week, you know, mm -hmm. but it's hard to start going two or three times a week with us because we have different flavor profiles and different, okay, you know, different, different menus. We're able to cater to the same customer customer multiple times a week. You literally just described my weekly eating habits. Uh, is is a uh, is operating a digital restaurant vastly different from running a brick and mortar restaurant? Um, I would say yes. There's definitely um, there's a lot of similarities. Like our kitchen, our, our four walls in the kitchen, it's very very similar. Um, actually, I like to think about it more of like more like a traditional restaurant because we want to put out good quality food, you know, we have experienced cooks, we have full recipes, um, you know, we don't know how to, we don't, you know, everything is made in-house from scratch, you know, our sauces, our marinades. Um, so it operates like a traditional restaurant, but then past the expo, that's when things change up, change a little bit. You know, we don't have waiters, we don't have uh, front of house staff, we don't have bus boys, so we don't have to deal, you know, we also don't have, like our ticket time is a little bit different. You know, we, we base our ticket time based on where the drivers are, you know, when they're picking up the food. And that's when we start making food is based on our driver demand and our driver, I guess our driver supply and where the drivers are at a time. So we don't want to make, a, prepare a bag, um, a ticket when our driver is 20 minutes away. We want to start making that food when our driver is about, five to seven minutes away. And that's when we, cause that's about how long it takes to make a dish. So that's where, you know, they're, you know, we're using empowered delivery to, to help us with that. You know, it's, um, you know, their, their system is based on machine learning and it helps you optimize when to make a dish based on where your drivers are. So when a customer gets their food, that food literally got made about eight minutes ago. It got made, the driver picked it up, delivered it to your house. So there's, it's not sitting around, on an expo counter, it's not going around the city taking a tour while you know they're delivering <laughs> other restaurant food. It's going from our kitchen straight to the driver's hand and then straight to your door. So that experience is um, it's hard to beat, you know. So that's where our, our best in class delivery experience comes in, into play. 
What about, uh, do you guys hire your own drivers? Like, I, I know if it was a brick and mortar, you'd hire the service staff, obviously. What about uh, in this case? Yeah, so we we have our, our, our pool of our own drivers, um, and that's who we deliver our food through. Correct. What about marketing? Is that uh, a lot different from brick and mortar compared to, you know, these yeah, this kind of yeah. a digital kitchen environment? Yeah, that's a, I think it's very correlated to being a digital food hall. So digital marketing for us is essential. Um, we rely on, you know, our social network channels. Um, you know, that's to me, it's like we're, I guess where it's different is, you know, we, the way that we market our food is we try to create content that has a certain viral component to it. And we want, you know, our network of, you know, whether it's influencers or customers, like we want our food to live on the internet. So when we think of making food, you know, we we, we think about how it's gonna photograph, we think about how it's gonna travel, how we package it. So when the customer receives the food, it's, it's kind of like the Apple box experience. It's like when you buy an Apple product and you open the case, it's a really nice box. It just feels like you're about to, like it feels like good quality. So our food has a similar component to where, you know, we want people to look at our food, taste great, but we also want people to spread the word, post our food. Um, so we, you know, our social and our online channels are very important. And I find them to be more relevant and more important than to a traditional brick and mortar where it's, you're not in a traditional brick and mortar, you're selling an experience with food, you know, with us, you know, the, the experience comes in the bag and, and that's, a, that's the entire experience. So one, the food has to shine and it has to be um, like a, much better than a traditional restaurant delivering food. And then once they receive the food, like we want that food to shine and really come through. Speaking of traditional, um, you know, I barely am aware of ghost kitchens, but uh, do you view do you view Umi as a traditional ghost kitchen? I absolutely not. <laughs> so I think um, so. We we're a delivery kitchen. Um, you know, we're forward facing. You know, our brand is very important to us. It's an open kitchen. Um, we're on a an almost a main and main street. Um, so there's really not a lot of like mystery to it or you know dark kitchen component to it you know we're like as you can see you know very mm -hmm. like this is also part of the experience is the, the pickup you know when customers pick up like it's not you know you're not going to a warehouse district and picking up food from you know the back of a, a warehouse you know where this is also part of the experience so we differentiate ourselves in 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 a way where also our food you know we're responsible for our own food we're responsible for our platform um, you know, most ghost kitchens, you know, they don't control the entire vertical. So that's a little bit different in terms of how we perceive ourselves to our customer. Do you use a software platform that is um, maybe you, unique to uh, something you're doing and it, has it helped you a lot? Um, yeah, I think the Empower Delivery platform has been essential for our, you know, our growth and our operation. Um, it really is the the brains and you know kind of like our command station um so we yeah like our business revolves around empower mm -hmm. do you uh what's what's kind of your goal for the future would you do you view growth as expanding the brands currently offered or moving to different locations or both um yeah it's i think it could be a little bit of both but really like our focus will be based around like expanding the the umi footprint and then you know, whether, you know, most likely those brands will come along with it. But, you know, let's say we're going to a demographic where maybe one of the brands is not relevant. Like people maybe don't like fried chicken and wings where we're going. So we can create a different brand and we have that flexibility that we can launch a digital brand um, pretty much in 30 days. You know, it's we don't need to build a restaurant. You know, we're building a menu, we're building a brand um, and that's all it takes. So. We have flexibility with our brands and we can replace them. Um, if a brand doesn't perform how we think it, it should be performing, we can always either improve it or, or replace it. But the idea would be to um, grow our UMI footprint. I have uh, one more question for you, but first tell me how people can find out more about UMI, UMI Kitchen. Yeah, so our, our social handle is, you know, at UMI Kitchen across all social platforms. And then our website as well is umikitchen.com. And we're located in Dallas, Texas. Okay, great. 
Uh, okay, last question for you. You go to umikitchen.com and you go to the brands uh, drop down menu and you've got those brands. What's kind of your um, go to meal of choice when you're a customer? Um, depends on the day of the week. <laughs> um, now, so, so for me, like my, my go-to right now is, and I also go through like faces, um, but under love bowls, we have a, a sunset strip bowl. Um, it uses a Rosewood ranch, um, ribeye. Um, it's a, it's a prime cut. So it's just a phenomenal dish and I'm just, I'm kind of hooked on it right now. And then Every once in a while, I'll, I'll um, kind of go into the wings and, you know, mix them up a little bit. <laughs> I like okay. spicy, so I like our angry buffalo wings are phenomenal. Sounds fantastic. Yeah, I'm looking at the sun st sunset strip now. looks great. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, Marcus, it's been great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Best of luck Thanks. with uh, Umi, Umi and everything in the future. Really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, chat. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Top Business Leaders Show, powered by Rise25. Visit rise25.com to check out more episodes of the show and to learn more about how you can start your own podcast.